In 1937, an engineer called Ben Bauer turned up at Shaw, opened his lab notebook, and sketched out the design for the uniphase principle. This would be a hugely important milestone in the history of Shaw because it delivered us the Unidyne platform of microphones which we're still using today. The first version of this was called the Unidyne 1. It looked a little bit like this, uh, but it was much bigger. It's called the Fat Boy. And this would go on to be used by Elvis Presley and change the face of rock and roll and live music history forever. Now we would refine this design two more times. Unidyne 1 became the Unidyne 2, which looked a much more like this product that we have here. And then we would refine it a third time into the Unidyne 3, which gave us our first Enfire microphones and ultimately delivered us the SM58 and the SM57. And this is the basis for pretty much every microphone that is dynamic and directional that we have in the portfolio today. For us and many other manufacturers as well, we have the SM58, the SM57 obviously, the SM7B has the same transducer principle as the SM58, it's a Unidyne 3 in this, but the control that we have over this transducer is quite limited. We can change the way that the airflow moves around and that's about it. And that's how we derive things like the audio frequency response and the directivity of the microphone. And even though that's a limited amount of control we have, we can still get it to do some quite interesting things. So an SM7B, for example, although it's the same kind of design as an SM58, it's the same transducer as an SM58, this product sounds completely different. And that's to do with the acoustic environment that it's built into and how we are um, using that airflow to get directivity and overall audio performance. Now, Shaw is a very innovative company. We like to think about driving the industry forward, doing new things with our products, trying to get new features into the market and into the hands of our customers. And we started to think about what happens if you add more elements into these transducers. So the first product that was a result of this research came in 2016. It's the KSM-8. And this has one transducer with two diaphragms. And in this example, those two diaphragms are interacting with each other. And it means that I eliminate the proximity effect that I would usually get from a dynamic directional microphone circuit. So if I move this to be further towards my face when I'm speaking, I don't get that low end increase that I would hear in a 50A or another kind of product. The two diaphragms interact with each other to make this as consistent as possible. So this product sounds just as good here as it does here. Now this has found its own life in our portfolio. There are a number of artists that are using this product on the road and getting excellent results. And we discovered and learned a lot of information about this when we designed this product, about having two elements inside one transducer. And fairly quickly, the discussion turned into, okay, if more elements gives us more features, what if we add a whole second transducer circuit into our microphones? What would the result be? What would that allow us to do? And the theory is really interesting. In theory, it means that you can have those two transducers interact with each other in different ways, and that gives you your directivity and your audio performance and gives you much more options compared to a single element design where you only have control over the airflow. If you've got two transducers wired together interacting with each other, you can make your microphone sound very different, have different directivity characteristics and do some really interesting things. At the same time, we looked at the market and found engineers were having to use multiple microphones to get the best results out of one audio source. So a kick drum is a really good example. You would have a Beta 91 in the kick drum and a Beta 52 outside of the kick drum. And those two microphones together would give you the overall sound that you're looking for. So we started to think about that, started to think about the technology that we were, had access to, that we were developing, and what would a new range of microphones look like. So in 2024, we arrived to the market with Nexodyne. This sits above beta in our portfolio, so it is the premium option that we offer. These are dynamic microphones, but they have two transducers inside one microphone element design. So we'll start off with the NXN2. This is our kick drum microphone. 
Again, two transducers inside one microphone capsule. This is really interesting because you have to do some fairly clever engineering to get around this problem of having two transducers, which would normally be very big, and get it to fit in a enclosure this small. But the advantages are huge. So in the NXN2 example, this is designed for kick drums. Like we said, if you wanted to mic up a kick drum normally, you're gonna have multiple microphones on that instrument. So you'll have a 91 inside to capture the overall character of the kick drum, the top end, the kind of click that you want to drive the track forward. And then you would have a Beta 52 on the outside capturing the wash. And usually you would compress that quite heavily to get the movement, sonic movement in the track or in the PA in order to get things working in the window that you want. NXN2 has been designed to give you the audio response of both of those microphones in one enclosure. What's important here is we're not using both transducers at the same time. There's still only one transducer circuit generating the audio, but the second transducer is wired into the first and it allows us to get much more sonic options out of these microphones. So it's still one XLR output, but it sounds like two microphones in one. It's really, really clever. This is a fantastic bit of kit. Sticking with the drum kit, we were finding some challenges that engineers were facing in terms of toms and snare. So the favorite snare drum mic that you've heard thousands of times over and over is the SM57. The design of that capsule is very interesting. It gives a lot of attack and a very nice rounded response, which is perfect for snare drums. Some engineers would say it lacks a bit of low end and therefore doesn't necessarily work for toms. And this means that engineers end up having to use a hybrid of different microphones on their drum kits. There's gonna be a dynamic SM57 on the snare and then maybe condenser microphones clipped onto the toms to get that low end performance that they're looking for. The NXN6, which is this microphone here, has been designed to have a very SM57-like response. So it has the attack that an SM57 does, but the overall response is much wider. So you can put this on your snare drum, you can put this on your rack toms and your floor toms and get much more sonic options at the transducer point to drive your mix, to drive your mixing console, to get stuff working through the PA or through your track really nicely. We've also built them into this enclosure, so they're very hard wearing. If your drummer hits it with a drumstick, it's still gonna work, it's still gonna sound great. It's a roadworthy piece of kit, and it's got this handy tom clip as well, so that it just fits straight onto the rim of these instruments without needing extra mic stands. Really cool bit of kit. The last microphone in the instruments lineup is the NXN5, and this has been designed to work on guitar and bass cabinets. And the challenges here were similar to the kick drum challenges. We were seeing engineers using combinations of ribbon microphones and dynamic microphones on guitar cabs to get the sound they wanted. So usually it'd be something like a KSM313 and an SM57. You're running two mic stands, you're running two XLR cables, you're combining two channels in a desk. And we felt there was a real opportunity within Nexodyne to do something a bit special. So this sounds like a ribbon and an SM57, and you don't need a mic stand, it just hangs in front of the guitar cab, which is really cool. But this is also super hard wearing. Ribbon microphones on tour, they can break very easily. It's very difficult to make sure that they have a consistent time out on the road and they're not gonna get bashed about too much. You can bash these about as much as you like and they're still gonna work and they sound fantastic as well. So another really cool bit to the instrument portfolio. Now, any kind of mic package that we put out is going to have some sort of vocal mic attached to it, and Nexodyne is no different. We have a vocal mic offering within this portfolio. And obviously, the heritage of this is very much designed around the SM58. We love the SM58. The industry uses it as a standard to test PA systems, to audio test things, and as a general work on anything, go anywhere, sound fantastic microphone. So the DNA of our vocal mics for Nexodyne were always gonna be SM58 in nature. These are the NXN8. They do sound quite SM58, but we were also seeing engineers opt for condenser microphones on stages like the KSM11 or the KSM9, primarily because PA systems have got very, very linear. They're able to deliver the sound that goes in that the mix engineer puts together in a very linear way out to their audience and therefore they're opting for condenser microphones to capture that top end to get it sound crisp and nice. So the NXN8 in our portfolio give you that condenser-like top end, but without the disadvantage of having a low gain before feedback threshold. So these dynamic microphones, you can push them very hard, you can get a lot of audio out of them without generating loads of feedback, 
and they sound very condensery as well. We offer two of these. There's a um, cardioid version and a super cardioid version. And we also offer them as wireless microphone capsules, which go on our wireless microphone transmitters. So you can have these on anything from SLX to QLX to ULX and Axiom Digital as well. So hopefully that's answered some questions for you. If you're interested in any of the microphones you've seen today, you can contact Leisure Tech. I'd recommend giving them a call or dropping them a message and getting a bit more information. Thank you.